Welcome to the Marsh Baptist Church. Let's all stand, if you will, please, and turn to page 185. 185. Let me say this tonight. If you look behind me at Brother Gage, one of these days he'll learn to keep his mouth shut with his wife and get some plastic cookware instead of pans that hurt. Because anyways, moving on, actually he... It was my fault. He helped me today do some mechanical work, and his bar slipped and hit him right in the head above his eye, and I feel bad. But good story. All right, amen. Good. Well, I tried, Brother Gage. Good luck with that. It's on you. Page 185. Let's sing it out now. Ladies, here we go. I stand amazing. Thank you. 
Father, we sure do love you tonight. Thank you so much for loving us. Lord, what a joy it is to be at your house again, midweek service on Wednesday night. Father, I pray that you'll just be with those prayer requests that we've been praying for uh, very hard this week, especially Brother Clay Huddleston. Please touch him and that family, especially tonight. And others that we're going to mention in a little while tonight, but Lord, you sure are good to us. You are prayer a warrior that we can go to, Lord. We know that we can go to you and that you'll hear us. And the Bible says if we have confidence in you and we'll seek your face, that you'll hear our petitions and you'll answer them according to your will. Bless us now tonight. Help us to honor and glorify you. your name I pray. Amen. All right, let's all turn to hymn number, if I can find it, 173. 173 in your red books, Love Lifted Me. We'll do the first and the last verse, please. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stayed within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me. church. I don't know about you, but I had a great time on Sunday. Amen. Good music. Good eating. Good singing. Good preaching. Good preaching. Amen. I didn't preach Sunday night. That's why I said that. Praise God. Amen. And uh, boy, we had a great time. Thank you so much for all those involved with that. All those that stayed and helped and helped set it up. Thank you, Brother Gage, Brother Troy, Brother Jacob. Bill, where's Brother Jacob at? Back there. And Brother Gage and Brother Troy did a tremendous job helping me with the fireworks. Thank you, uh, fellas, for that. And uh, also, Brother Evan was back there helping us, trying to coordinate everything as well. So he did a good job helping us as well. But we had a good time doing that church, and it was an enjoyable time. Amen? And uh, nobody got hurt. I know you got hit with some things, but like my mother-in-law said, or somebody else said, when you get hit with those things like that, that just means you're real close to the action, praise God. Nobody got hurt, right? Amen. All right, good. Amen. But good to see you tonight. Good to be in God's house tonight. And uh, <clears throat> I hope you bought some CDs of that music group. I know there's different CDs they had of different groups, but boy, they, they, it'll bless your heart. We need good, good, good music tonight. We, we need it, Amen. The world's got their own version of gospel music, but I, I, want, God, I want God's music, amen? amen. And uh, anyways, thank you so much for all those that did, had a part with that. And uh, the group wanted to say a special thank you as well for, uh, boy, and I appreciate them being so friendly, don't you, church? Amen. They were involved. They, they didn't just stand around their corner and, and it was about them. They, they got involved with our young people as well, the older folks, or wiser folks, excuse me. And uh, good to see you tonight. Peoria Rescue Mission, that is this Friday at 7 o'clock. I think it was normally 7.30, but now it's at 7 o'clock, right, Brother Rogers? 7 o'clock on Friday night. And if you've never been to that, you need to go, church, because it'll show you that, hey, we're blessed. Right. But they're blessed just to be where they're at and be, and be able to go to church. Yeah. 
and it'll change your thinking about uh, some of the folks that have rough lives, how they're seeking for the right thing. And uh, Brother Rogers does a great job with that, with those, I know the Yens go, the Renos go, several other people go to that. And, uh, but I do know that they have a good time with that and God does work there. People get saved all the time there. And that's a great thing. Thank you, Brother Rogers. Thank you, Brother Rogers. Thank you, Brother Rogers, for being so faithful. How many years, Brother Rogers, have been going there? Very, very faithful, and sometimes we don't, we don't, we, we overlook the, the the guys like that and ladies like that who do all the work behind the closed doors. But I appreciate you doing it, Brother Rogers, and those that go and get and be involved with that. Thank you so much for that. I'm looking forward to this on Sunday. Um, missionary Mark Holmes, uh, he's from Mississippi. Uh, he's down. Uh, he's from down uh, at the Gulfport area, and uh, was raised there. And uh, boy, he's in the mission field and doing a tremendous work. We don't, we don't, we don't do anything with him yet, but I want him to present his work on Sunday and uh, let you know uh, what's going on in, in Nigeria. And uh, you'll enjoy him and his wife. And I believe three of their kids. They have how many kids total? Five or six, and I believe in three of them. I believe with them, and uh, make sure we welcome them to our church on Sunday. And then, of course, our wise folks uh, uh, serving uh, Silver Saints meals, Jan July 16th at 5 o'clock, and that'll be a good time of fellowship. Brother Cotton's wanting to go back to uh, uh, Osaki and have his yum yum sauce. Right, Brother Cotton? And then your little teacup. Okay. And uh, so you take your own cup next time. You might want to take some more tea next time, too. Amen. Instead of water, praise God. But anyways, happy birthday to those birthdays this week. We have a few of them there. Happy birthday to them. And, of course, our memory verse is Isaiah 59, verse number 2. And most of you know Renee Ellison, right? Okay. Miss Renee has, I believe this is right, thyroid cancer. Is that correct? And so let's put Renee on our prayer chain, if you will, in our prayer list, please. And uh, we, we want to pray for our, the people of God that are, that are going through a hard can I remind you, church, especially hearing about Miss Huddleston, uh, her husband, and we're still waiting on test results there. Uh, Brother Johnson is still waiting on test results with his, and of course, Miss Carpenter, and then Miss Renee, and other people that we know outside of our church and in our church. Sometimes we forget how blessed we really are. Yeah, that's right. we, we, take, we take life, we take health, we take everything for granted, church. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope and pray when those prayer chains, Miss Brenda does a great job with those prayer chains. And I hope and pray when the preacher asks you to pray for something, I hope and pray it just doesn't go one, one ear and out the other ear. You know why? Because one day you're going to need it. And uh, shame on us. Shame on us if we're not willing to pray for each other. Well, I don't like them. It doesn't matter if you like them or not. Pray for them. Because I got news for you tonight. This isn't preaching time. It's just reminding us tonight. Prayer changes things. Say it again. Prayer changes things. You wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for prayer. And uh, good to see you tonight in your place. Brother Rogers, lead us in prayer for the offering, if you will, sir, please.
All right, if we can all stand for the reading of God's Word, kids and teachers can be dismissed. Go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 11, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Miss Patty, you ready? Okay. Let's read one verse. It'll be verse number 14. Let's read that together. Proverbs 11 and verse 14 says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Let's pray. Father, a uh, word that jumps out there is, is fall. And, uh, Lord, there's a lot, of, a lot of Christians falling these days. And, Lord, we need you. We need you in our life. We need your direction. We need your wisdom and guidance. Lord, we just pray for your guidance tonight. Pray that you'd be with our pastor. We pray that you would uh, give us the ears to hear as he's going through the book of Proverbs. I love the book of Proverbs, Lord. And, and uh, just give us something here to get our fires stirred for the rest of this week. And, Lord, most of all, help us to be soul conscious. We pray these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated. There's a man who lives beside me who fought in World War II. He proudly waves old glory from high upon his roof. He starts out every morning like it's Independence Day. I've seen him at attention, salute the flag and say, I love this land from sea to shining sea. I love this land, home of the brave and free. I love the liberty, the justice, and the truth on which we stand. One nation under God, I love this land. All across the country, big cities, little towns, while mama's getting ready, Dad pulls the car around. They join the congregation to sing Amazing Grace. They're free to worship Jesus, and they're free to pray. I love this land from sea to shining sea. I love this land, home of the brave and free. I love the liberty, the justice, and the truth on which we stand. One nation under God, I love this land. God bless America, land I love. Oh, I will stand beside her and defend her with my life. For my children, for freedom, oh. I love this land from sea to shining sea. I love this land, home of the brave and free. I love the liberty, the justice, and the truth on which we stand. One nation under God. I love this land, one nation under God. I love this land. Praise the Lord. Thank God for it, church. Amen. I still love the red, white, and blue. I'm still proud to be an American. Amen. And they say, preacher, well, all these shootings and killings and so forth and so on. I'm going to say it this way, whether you like it or not tonight. We get what we deserve. America is not what she used to be. And, but you're going to find America, as far as I know, as far as I can tell tonight, America still has a, has a chance. Church, I don't know about you tonight, but I, I would still love to see revival break out across this land. What would happen if God would show up in this land and turn it upside down for God? And he said, preacher, well, we got we to push, push, push. No. 
we got to start right here first. We can't worry about everywhere else. We have to worry about what goes on here. Amen, church? And, uh, I, but I still love the old red, white, and blue. Amen? And uh, I'm glad God allowed me to be raised in America. And uh, it wouldn't hurt some of us every once in a while probably to go to a foreign country and see what it's really like. And uh, I know Brother Rogers has been everywhere. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Rogers. Right. And uh, as I think somebody said the other day in Lithuania, I believe gas is $8 a gallon, $10 a gallon, something like that. And uh, we're blessed in America. Don't even, and a lot of times we, don't, we forget. How would you like to live in a tent, cardboard box? Uh, boy, I wish I could take you to the mission field. I'm looking forward to ni- hearing about Nigeria. And uh, some of those mission fields, when you come as an American, they think that you're almost like the president of the United States of America. And uh, it's amazing how kids and people treat you from being from America. And they, they, they just wish to have what you have tonight. And you've got it. And sometimes you forget about it. Proverbs 11 tonight, I told you last week when I started chapter 11 that I wasn't going to rush through this book or this chapter. This is one of my favorite chapters in the book of Proverbs tonight because there's so many good verses. And by the way, yes, we know Solomon wrote this, but listen to me, this is not Solomon's words. This is God's words. And uh, I wish we could catch on some things tonight. I'll do a little reviewing. Uh, Verse number 8. Before we get into verse number 14 and some others tonight, verse number 8, I said this last week, and I really I like the way this, this verse presents itself. The righteous is what, church? Delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his steed. We're so concerned about the violence today in the, in the world, and just in, not only in the world, but in our own country as we've figured out July 4th, we always hear about shootings in California, shootings in here and there. Uh, Chicago is only about two and a half hours away. It's getting closer to home, church. Oh, I'm going to move out of Illinois now. No guarantee it's not going to happen somewhere else. I mean, it's sad when you're having a parade and somebody wants to start shooting off a rooftop. By the way, it's still called evil. It's not the guns. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and remind you again tonight. It's not the guns. It's the evil people. And you're going to find, though, look at this verse. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. Tonight, I'm going to remind you just for a second tonight. Do you understand tonight that every time you walk out your door nowadays, every time you get in your vehicle, every time, uh, you know, as I'm kind of care Brother Gage earlier when he hit himself in his eye and I looked up and I'm thinking blood oh goodness here we go but it could have been a lot worse his eyeball could have been popped out of his eye, out of his head I don't want to vision that preacher do you understand tonight how blessed we are you go to work wasn't it sad I didn't realize this just a few months ago uh, that a guy at Caterpillar I believe it was is that true they lived in Mapleton, fell into the boiling tank, and got fried alive, basically. Forty-something years old, three kids, I think it is. That happened here right down the street from our church, folks, at work. I said, Preacher, what are you talking about tonight? We is, uh, we're not perfect people, but we're saved, amen? Do we understand tonight that, the, that God protects the righteous people? We say, well, preacher, the wicked, the wicked, the wicked, they're they're, they're taking over, taking over. You have no idea what's going on. My heart's a little heavy tonight for our neighbors here at our church, across the street from our church. I won't go in details, but I, 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 some of you saw the farm equipment out front last week, and uh, he had called me and asked me if he could leave his farm equipment out there or move his farm equipment to do the wheat. I said, he said, preacher, I know it's Wednesday night. You got church. I know it's, a, you know, I said, hey, look. I said, we all know farmers around here. You're our neighbor. You call NAS. Absolutely, you can use the parking lot. If you want to run over somebody else's, somebody's car in the parking lot, just make sure it's not mine. 
And uh, he did that. And, of course, uh, I forgot to tell some of the men, and they were out there asking him. But thank you, fellas, for treating him right. And then Mrs. Zinn told my wife what had just happened Saturday. Did you all hear what happened to our neighbor Saturday? His son-in-law committed suicide. Don't go out and run that in the ground. Uh, right across the street in the basement, two little kids were at home, and uh, he's our he's been farming here for years. And I left the church Wednesday night, and he was outside, and I stopped and talked to him and said, "Look, whatever we can do as a church, we're here for you. We're praying for you." And uh, tears in his eyes, I said, "Preacher, what do you do?" I said, "I don't know, but God knows." He said, Preacher, life's not that bad, is it? That's what he said to me. Life's not that bad. I said, well, no, it shouldn't be that bad. But what happens is, listen to me, church, we forget how good we're blessed as God's people. Preacher, what does that have to do with you tonight? I'm going to stay with me tonight. But again, God protects the righteous. And keep your heads up tonight. Don't let the wicked discourage you. Because their day is coming. And, you know, sometimes we want to shout about revelations. Yeah, God's going to get them all. But wait a minute. That could be family friend, family of yours. That could be your neighbors. That could be coworkers of yours. But he's going to get them all. He's a great judge and he's going to bring it down, no doubt. But listen to me. Live righteously and let God... I'm learning this more and more every day. I, I want to fight my own battles. But God don't need no help. He says, if you'll let me do it, it'll be a whole lot better. Because God promises to take care of the righteous. And the wicked days are coming. Verse number 8. Now, let's go to verse number 12, I believe it is tonight. Verse number 12. This, is, this talks about this tonight. So I mentioned this across the street. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. We all have neighbors, right? Sometimes we don't like neighbors, do we? Sometimes, I got news for you, you can have nosy neighbors. Amen? But your Bible says that a man that hath wisdom well, be nice to his neighbor, basically, what it's saying tonight. Well, they're jerks, preacher. They sure can be. But you may be the only Christian they ever see. For years, right next door to our church, that husband and wife that lived there for many years, there was something that happened 50 years ago. I didn't, I don't, I wasn't here, have no idea. There's two sides of every story. I believe it was about some chickens at one time. Then it was about this and that. I don't know. But it was sad that they, if you parked a bus too close to the line, he would blow a fuse. Right, Brother Bruce? Would blow a fuse. You know, that's sad. We're a church. And our neighbor, amen, church. Our neighbors should, should know that we're a church and have respect for our church. I thank the Lord I got the, I got the privilege uh, not too long ago to talk to the son and uh, apologize. I apologize. I wouldn't even hear it, but I still apologize. You know why? Because it's our, listen to me, church. I don't care what your neighbors do. It's, we're, we're supposed to be the better people. Look at your, hey, that's not, that's, Solomon wrote the Bible, wrote, the, wrote, wrote, wrote Proverbs chapter uh, 11, verse number 12, but that was still God's words. I'm pretty sure you don't understand my neighbor. Listen to me, but Johnson and I could talk about uh, one neighbor we have uh, near one of our hunting places that, and one place that he farms. I mean, this guy's a nutcase. He's all the time trying to aggravate and push my buttons, and he does a good job of pushing my buttons. Listen to me, I'm supposed to not push back. You know why? Because when I push back, number one, I'm marring my testimony. Number two, I'm marring his testimony. Listen to me, folks, I'm not preaching to the choir tonight because I know all of us in this room have troubles with this because people can be very mean, very cruel. They can cuss you. 
they can threaten you, so forth, so on. But I love when Judge Judy comes on and it's neighbors fighting about a stinking tree. Because Judge Judy tells both of them how dumb they are fighting over a tree in the middle of a property line, for crying out loud. One wants to cut it down. One wants to say it, hug the tree. And sometimes it's just funny to watch how Judge Judy responds to that. But the fact is, it's the craziest thing. But you know what? Don't let a tree, don't let a tree with your neighbor cause you to lose your Christianity. It's just a tree. Preacher, my neighbor's right on the line. I got to stop him. Come on now. Hey, church, we represent the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You okay? It's verse number 12. Let's move on a little bit faster tonight, please. <clears throat> it's better to be at peace with your neighbor. Verse number 13, look at this. Verse number 13. A tell bearer revealed the secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. I'm going to say this to you tonight. Look up at me when I say this because I'm not scared to say it. There's things you need to keep your mouth shut. You ever heard of confi conf confidential? Yeah. Thank you. You ever heard of that word? It's a very powerful word. But we live in a day and age where everybody wants to tell everybody what they know or what they've heard. Kind of reminds you of something tonight. If you, if, if you, if you haven't heard it by the, the, the person, you heard it from somebody else, there's a very good possibility that you got it wrong. And by the way, when somebody tells you something, listen to me, this Facebook mess, when they come to you and say, hey, I'm going to tell you something, I want it confidential, don't go on Facebook and put it on Facebook for them. You know what you're doing? You're doing what Proverbs says not to do. You have, listen to me, you have no wisdom. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care what you think, what you think and what you know. If you don't know how to keep your mouth shut, you have no wisdom. A talebearer revealeth what, church? Secrets. And by the way, listen to me, folks. There are certain people I don't talk to. You know why? Because I know as soon as I talk to them, they're going to tell somebody else. And you try it. We've done this for games, Mrs. McCormick, many times before, and it's the funniest thing. You whisper in somebody's ear, then they whisper the same thing to somebody else's ear, and you try to do that throughout the whole game, and then by the time it comes around, you're supposed to have the same exact thing that you start out with. Never happens. I miss, you know, we start out with maybe my name is Joe. Not hard, right? By the time it gets to the end, it's I went to Florida, had a picnic, and fell off the cliff, and got hit in the head with a, with a, with a crowbar. Uh, who knows? I mean, it's crazy. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? All right. You know why? Because people can't remember half of what they hear. Everybody okay? Listen to me. When people come to you with co and asking you to be confidential, you know what that means? Keep that motor mouth shut. Oh, I, I, I got to tell somebody. I, 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 I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Why? Why? Well, I know something. So what? Keep it to yourself. Do you understand tonight that God gave us a Bible? Is that all God knows? Is it? No. Maybe the rest of the, maybe the rest that God knows when he wants to be confidential. That's why he didn't tell us. Everybody Okay. So listen to me, preacher, well, I, I want to find out what's going on. And listen to me, by the way, when we say pray for somebody they got unspoken, don't go to that person and say, what's going on? Yeah. Maybe they want it confidential. And somebody you say, preacher, well, so -so's got, maybe you hear somebody's got a problem. Well, don't go to them trying to figure it out. It could be confidential. Everybody okay? Listen to me, God don't like a tail bearer. In other words, and I, listen to me, you know what's going to hurt you and hurt your friendships and hurt your family? By running your mouth too much. Remember what I said? Alligator mouth, hummingbird brain. Notice this tonight. Watch this. God gave you how many ears, church? How many mouths? Some of you got more than that. You know why he gave you two ears and one mouth? So hard tonight. He wants you to listen double more than you talk. In a tangent, listen tonight, you don't have to speak everything you hear. Tell bearer, reveal those secrets. Y'all okay tonight? 
Are you in shock yet? Okay, good. Look at verse number 15 quickly tonight. Let me just throw this out there for free tonight. He that is surety for a stranger shall uh, smart for it, and he that hateth suretyship is sure. I said, preacher, what does that mean? It means basically this. Praying one's, paying one's debts is asking for trouble. Do some research there on that verse and study it out. You're going to find it talks about uh, paying, somebody, paying somebody that you don't know. Even paying family is, is trouble anyway. Somebody say amen out there. Don't pay somebody else's debts. If they get in debt, let them pay for it. Everybody okay? Verse number 16. Here we go. I'm fixing to make all the ladies mad. I'm sorry, but it's in the Bible. Verse number 16, look at it. A what church? A what church? A gracious woman, woman retaineth honor, and strong men retaineth riches. Let me say this first of all tonight. We need a, a nation again of some strong men. I'm going to throw it out there whether you like or not tonight. I know it's Wednesday night Bible study, but I am getting sick and tired of a bunch of sissy men. But let me turn around. I'm getting sick and tired of women who aren't gracious. Ladies, I got bad news for you. Proverbs 30 is coming. And Proverbs 30 talks about how to be the right kind of lady you should be. Somebody say amen tonight. It's in the Bible. I didn't write it. God wrote it. But fellas, listen to me <clears throat> tonight that we live in a society today where we have so many weak men. I, I, sorry, I rephrased that because I preached it a couple of weeks ago on Father's Day. Not weak men. We got a bunch of weak boys. But your Bible talks about being a strong man, obtaining the riches. Oh, so that means I got to work hard so I can make money. It's not about making that kind of money. It's about being rich in wisdom, rich with understanding, rich with spirituality. You know why? Because that pays the most anyhow. Ladies, can I say this to you tonight? I'm getting tired of the world saying, well, ladies deserve this and ladies deserve that. Listen to me. There's no tug of war. God set it all up from day one. Husband's supposed to be the leader. Women's supposed to be the helper. Not listen to me. I get tired of you saying, well, you Baptists think that the women should be the submissive one. Why don't you read the Bible and study it right tonight? The lady is the helper of the husband. By the way, the husband will never be what he should be without the wife that he should have. And the wife, according to verse number 15, ought to be very gracious. You all okay? A woman of grace, this is what gracious means basically tonight. A woman of grace and favor, one who by meekness and modesty and prudence renders herself, watch this, acceptable, to God. Hear what I said? A gracious woman, according to the definition that I found, is a woman of grace and favor, one who by meekness and modesty and prudence renders herself acceptable and admirable to God above. I'm getting tired of a society of women trying to please everybody else. It's about time you ladies please God, not nobody else. By the way, listen to me carefully tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and make you mad since you're already looking at me crazy anyways tonight. Stop trying to please everybody else's man. Why don't you try to please your man and please God in the process? Preacher, here we go again. It's Wednesday night. You're supposed to be very nice in teaching us. I am. It's about time we teach these young girls how to be gracious and honorable and meek. I love hanging around some of our ladies in our church. I won't give them names. They sit over here, uh, some of our wiser folks, and over here is one of them over here. And this one over here is a little feisty. Oh, sorry, Miss Wise, did I say that? She's Miss Feisty just a little bit every once in a while. If you don't believe me, ask Mrs. Miss Atkins and Randy. But, boy, I'll tell you, what eloquent. I mean, dresses to a T. I mean, just, 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 I mean, the way she presents herself at her, at her young age and still plays golf twice today. You are the, yeah. But boy, I tell you, you get around Mrs. Cotton and Mrs. Cotton, you got to pray for him. 
he's honorary. Oh, Mrs. Cotton is such a ball. I, mean, I can't tell she's young. Energetic, very sweet. I bet you. What you mean, huh? Don't tell me she's mean. I, I couldn't see a mean bone in her body, praise God. <laughs> Miss Flaherty, Miss Hedge. I don't know about you, Mrs. Hedge. Miss Angie over there now, she can be a little feisty over there. I'm sure, right, Brother Jack? Careful what you say, Brother Jack. You're in church, bro. <laughs> Not what I'm saying. <laughs> but, Tibbs, should we, should we go to your wife or should we move on? <laughs> should I come over here to this side? Miss Johnson, Meek. All right, Brother Johnson. Calm. Collective, never gets mad. You wouldn't lie in church, would you? Okay. <laughs> Don't stop here. I'm right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ann, she's not here. Should I? Should we? Should we? Okay. Brother Rogers. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. But tell us to me, we need a generation of ladies today that'll show our young girls it's not about what you wear, it's not about what you have. I'm going to say this to you tonight it's not your position. God set the ladies up to be gracious ladies, spiritual. Preacher, why is it such a big deal for a lady to be gracious and spiritual? Because a lady has one of the hardest jobs in the world. A lady usually does most of it, stays at home, and takes care of her husband and her children. That is, just look up at me. I don't care what the world says. I'm sick and tired of what the world says. That's why we're in a mess we're in tonight, because we have pushed the women to the workforce when women belong at home doing the best job in the world. I'm not against a lady having a job. Don't get mad at me tonight. But I'm telling you right now, we've got a generation of young people that are worthless as worthless can be because moms, especially tonight, and dads have dropped the ball. We're more concerned about our career and what, we, what, 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 what kind of career, what kind of name we can have for ourselves instead of being gracious and having meekness and doing what God set up from the day one. By the way, don't get mad at me. That ain't my words. That's God's words. Ladies, we need you, seriously tonight, to step it up for our young girls. Bella needs a good example tonight. Her mom's doing a fine job, and so is dad, I guess. Right, Jeremy? You doing okay with Bella? Most part, you ain't beat her too much, have you? We need, I, I got to see Jeremy's mom and daddy on Sunday. I'm gonna tell you this, I mean, Jeremy's mom and daddy, how long have they been going to that church, Jeremy? Got to ask your wife. Imagine that. 30-something years. You know what? <clears throat> um, man, every time I get around Jeremy's mom and daddy, he's fun to be around, but his mama is just very quiet. And, of course, I know Jeremy will tell you otherwise, and you get to know her mama, she ain't that quiet. But you know what, church? Ladies, we need to get back to that. Our young girls, Bella and... Ashley over here and Emily back here and we got real young ones over here. You got Carly over here and you got some others in our church. You know, Channing's kids aren't here tonight and they're rambunctious and they're crazy, no doubt, as young as they are. But you know what they need to learn? They need to learn how to be a, the girls now, they need to learn how to be a gracious lady, how to walk right, how to talk right, how to sit right. Hello. I can't go to a lot of weddings to, you know, anymore. You know why? Because people have forgotten what's going on. I hate summertime. You know why? Because people have forgotten how to put clothes on. And listen to me. I, 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 I gotta, I, I'm gotta. i not going to make it nowhere tonight. Sorry. But this is just what God wants tonight. It is sad. It is sad that our five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-year-old girls are looking like a bunch of whores and prostitutes. 
Somebody say amen right there. Oh, preacher, well, they're just little small kids. Doesn't matter. There's such thing as called perverted men that want to touch five, six, seven years old. And mom and daddy, you got to sue your brain for non-support. Put some clothes on your little girls so perverts won't look at them. Well, preacher, it's a different world. My Bible hadn't changed. Neither has God. What, what do you mean, preacher? Being gracious is what I'm talking about tonight. And teaching our young girls how to be gracious. Well, preacher, they got to attract the men, not at 10 years old. Matter of fact, not at 15 years old. Matter of fact, I'm going to go further, not at 20 years old. God's already got them picked out, you knucklehead. Stop trying to force something when God can already do it. Our world's sick. But I know tonight, ladies, I'm sorry I didn't mean this tonight. I'm not attacking nobody in this room. Please don't take this wrong tonight, ladies. But let's get back to being gracious and meek. Now, there's some fireballs in this church. Oh, yeah, there's some fireball ladies in this church. You push your buttons enough, they're going to push back. Right, fellas? But, Renzi, your wife's not here. You can say that. No, sir, she's not in here. By the way, Solomon wrote this verse in the Bible. It's kind of funny why it's there, where it's at, but it is. And I skipped to one verse that I want to deal with tonight, and I'll do this just for a minute. Where no counsel is, verse number 14, our text verse tonight. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. By the way, tonight, stop going to the people that you want to go to that will tell you what you want to hear. That's not counsel, by the way. Let me say this to you tonight. This is a powerful statement that I got a long time ago. Receiving counsel is not one admitting or, yeah, admitting what he intends to do, but rather asking and listening to what one should do. Do me a favor. Don't waste my time. Don't waste somebody else's time if you're going to call and seek counsel by saying what you're going to do. That is not counsel. Counseling is asking and thinking about what you should do before you ever make a decision. And your Bible says where there, no, where there no counsel is, the people what? You holier than thou, thank you, you got it all figured out on your own. The reason why you're going to fall flat one day is because this. Your Bible says in the book of Proverbs, where no counsel is, the people will fall. Listen to me. By the way, I don't go to my peers a lot of times when I go to get counsel. Why? My peers know about as much as I do. I'm going to go to the older men of God who's been down the road. You know why? Great counseling can come from that. And I've gotten to the point, here's, here's my philosophy at this point. If you come to me, which I wish you would, because believe it or not, I want to help anybody that would come to me. If you'll come to me, if I don't have the answer, I'll be the first to tell you, well, that's a good question. Give me a few days to get back with you. You know why? Because I can figure it out. Nope. So I can get on the phone and get some counsel and figure out what to do. I've got to do it. As pastor, I've got to do it. Wait a minute, but you can't do it? You know what's going to happen? You're going to fall. Oh, i got to figure it out, preacher. Listen to me. Look at here tonight. Nobody in this room has it figured out. I guarantee you, I'm going to say this. Please take it right. If Mrs. Tibbs had new babies today, don't say you can't because Sarah, can Sarah did, so be careful what you say now, okay? Miss <laughs> Nichols had one member before she left. She <laughs> Lord, you heard her say it. Man, what a, be, what a miracle what a miracle to be in church, praise God. But Tibbs is going, break your hush. <laughs> Even though Miss Tibbs has raised how many kids? Four. How many grandkids? Eleven. Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Two okay. Even if she had a newborn today to raise all over again, I'm gonna tell you she'll still seek counsel. You know why? Different world. 
Right, Miss Tibbs? Might cry a lot. Preacher, what do you mean? Listen to me tonight. Nobody in this room has it figured out. And the best thing that we can do to make our lives a little bit easier is when we got to make a decision. Before we make a decision, go get counsel. By the way, that's Christian counsel. Stop going, listen to me. You are a knucklehead by going to an unsafe person seeking counsel. But preacher, they're smart. They're not spiritually minded. According to that Bible, According to Proverbs, they have no wisdom if they're not spiritual. I didn't write it. God did. Stop going to everybody else. You know, people say, well, preacher, I, I've got to go seek counselor for my mental state. I've got to go uh, seek an unsaved counselor. You're messing up because they can't help you. I'm going to shock you tonight. All they're going to do is give you some dope. Medicine. Say so here, medicine fixes it. According to, your, according to what I've heard from doctors and stuff that I've studied, medicine sometimes don't fix nothing. They make it worse. The only person that can help anybody, strongholds, whatever it may be tonight, the only person that can help you is God. And the only person that can get you closer to God is God, counsel, godly counselors. Here's our problem tonight. You don't want to come to me. You don't want to come to somebody else that's spiritual. You know Why? Because you know what we're going to say, and you don't want to hear it. And that's going to be your loss. Where no counselors is, the people fall. I hope I can help you tonight. Just a few verses tonight that are pretty powerful verses. Like I said, chapter 11 is one of my favorite chapters. I love verse number 30. We're going to get there hopefully by next week. He said, Richard, we're going to drag this thing out. No, we're not going to, but I'm going to do what he says, number one. And listen to me tonight. If I can help one person in this room tonight, it would be worth it to me. Let's just remember tonight we make decisions every day of our lives, and what will help us to make the right decisions is picking up a phone. Man, we, we were so lucky tonight. You know what I'm saying? We got Facebook. We got uh, Instagram, I guess. We got what all this stuff is. Somebody help me. It's Twitter. Huh? Can't. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't do it all. Do what, Bella? Snapchat. Uh, who wants to take a picture of you? I don't do that. We got Google. We got Yahoo. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Asking Google for counsel to make a major decision is not going to help you like it should. Asking somebody that's spiritual could help you. You know, there's times sometimes. That's why I like to meet with the men on major decisions at the church. You know why? Because sometimes I don't see the way they see it. We all are different. Channing has a different opinion than Brother Tibbs does, I'm sure. And when I meet with the men, I'm looking for each person's opinion. Now, I may not use everybody's, but the fact is, sometimes I, I walk out of the room, I'm going, man, Brother Tibbs brought out a great point. Or Brother Cotton, he never says anything. Or Brother Archer, I mean, last the, the, on the van, I'll just say this tonight. I, was, I, I just loved meeting with the men in the van. Brother Archer, you know, I, I mentioned something. Brother Archer stepped up and said, yeah, preacher, I think we ought to do that. And I'm thinking, man, that's, a, that, 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 that's great. You know why? I mean, we can all get counsel from each other tonight. I mean, you know, hey, folks, listen to me. You know, somebody in the church can help you if you go ask them. Listen to me, when you, when you get asked, keep in mind, I, I'll be done. When you get asked, don't tell them what you, what you, don't try to make yourself look good. Tell them the truth. I go see a doctor. I don't want a doctor telling me, hey, you got one year, I mean, you got cancer, stage five, stage six, whatever it may be. I mean, in other words, you're going to die tomorrow technically. But I, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you some hope. You got six months. Truth is, I got tomorrow. If I got tomorrow, tell me I got tomorrow. And so somebody comes to you for counseling, listen to me, don't think to yourself, how am I going, how am I going, what am I going to say because I want them to be my friend. Forget that. They're wanting counsel. Sometimes counseling hurts. But stop, listen to me, stop thinking you know it all. Go to somebody and get counsel. You know why? Because it will change your life. Because the Bible says without counseling there is what? Or when the people... Go back to reverse. Sorry. Where no counsel is, the people what? But in the 
multitude of counselors, there is what church? Father, bless the invitation tonight to speak to our hearts. I pray. Lord, thank you for what we've heard from the word of God tonight, a few verses out of chapter 11. Lord, help us to examine ourselves tonight and be mindful of what the Spirit of God speaks to our hearts tonight about and do business with you at the altar. In your name I pray. Stand to our feet. Music plays tonight. All right, if you'd have a seat here real quick.